Hello everybody and welcome back to the Phoenix Wright Eastern, a Trials and Tribulations walkthrough. It is time to begin Episode 2, The Stolen Turnabout. Well, that was certainly a dramatic opening to a case, wasn't it? <laughs> and, oh! Love this theme so much! Like, oh, it just... It just makes me so insanely happy. Tell you this is just one of those... Well, at least in this v variant, it's just so happy and upbeat, and oh, I just smile so much every single time I hear it. And what makes me particularly happy about this case is that it's the return of Maya and Pearl into the uh, the narrative, because obviously we've had we had the flashback. And now we're back in the present day. And really, Maya and Pearl were always kind of the major highlight of the Ace Attorney franchise. Along with the uh, Turnabout Sisters theme. So I think it was a mighty shame that Maya and well, Maya just never really appeared after Trials and Tribulations. She basically went missing. It was, it was bizarre. It was a very dark time. And she didn't really make her reappearance until Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. And then they finally, finally brought her back in uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney 6 which I cannot remember the title of for the life of me. Largely because, um... I've not played it yet. <laughs> oh yes, Spirit of Justice, that's the one. But, yeah, it's... Like, in terms of my playing of the Ace Attorney franchise, I've only ever played the original three. And that's not through actively avoiding it or anything. Um, I think it was just... I played the first three and was just like, yes, I'm loving this. Um, and then other games just kind of got in the way and... I thought, well, I don't really... Well, I can't really get Dual Destinies or what have you until I've played um, Apollo Justice. But then I've not really got a desire to play Apollo Justice, because I know that it's kind of the weakest in the series. And... Or at least it was at the time, anyway. And then I've just not gotten round to playing anything else... ...in the series. Which... Part of me is sad about that, but then I know that... ...the original trilogy was the peak. 
it, that was that's the the best the the Ace Attorney franchise has. Um, so to be fair, I'm kind of happy that this is all I've played of the series. Though one day I really do hope that I manage to get down and play Apollo Justice, Dual Destinies, and Spirit of Justice because I do really love the franchise and I feel the need I need to support it, you know. And hey, look, it's Adrian Andrews. Now, um, you might not actually uh, recognise Adrian Andrews, but uh, we have actually come across her before, and uh, that's because uh, she was the business manager who managed the actor Matt Ungard until she testified against him in his trial for the murder of his rival, Juan Corridor. So, she obviously appeared in the last case of... Uh, Justice for All. So, it's really nice that she returns, and obviously there are a load of characters that uh, make their reappearance in this game and it's so obviously because I played this game first I never quite got the all of the little references obviously the game sets it up really well in that you don't actually need prior knowledge of the events that took place because Nick is reflecting on everything because even though I say this is the present day the where the place well Nick's still a bit further ahead in terms of where his narration is coming from so uh, we've still got a bit of time before we get to uh, that point. But yeah, I've just, I've just completely forgot that, uh, well, where my point was going, but I'm sure you get the gist of it. You, if I'm remembering where I was correctly, just to kind of back up, um, you do get more out of the game if you've played the first two in the series, but because Nick explains who everybody is in relation to him, uh, you manage to get to grips with everything quite quickly. So it's not necessary that you know who Adrian Andrews is, but it can help you understand quite a few things. So obviously with Adrian Andrews, the whole point of her name is related to the original case in, that she appeared in. Um, so her name is clearly androgynous in all language versions of the game, so uh, it could be seen as being either masculine or feminine, with the usual assumption being masculine, but obviously it's not the case. Um, her Japanese name is uh, Kamiya Kiryu, and uh, basically this was done so that Shelley the Killer could mistake her for a man based on the na basis of her name alone in that original case. Um, And actually, something that's quite fascinating is that um, in the original, well, in Justice for All, and I don't know whether it turns up in Trials and Tribulations as well, but we'll just go with it. Um, the term codependency was used to describe Andrews's emotional issues, but it's a misinterpretation of the word. To be codependent is to be an enabler or one who relies on being needed um, and loses sense of oneself should the dependent start to become self-reliant. Andrews is simply dependent on other people emotionally and is not an enabler. 
and they fixed that in the uh, 3DS remake. Well, it's less a remake, more a port of the series, um, where she is described to have a dependent nature, um, which is obviously much more accurate. And there is a whole thing to do with um, Celeste in Pax, who was part of that case um, that Adrian Andrews appeared in, because Celeste in Pax was Adrian Andrews' mentor, and so on and so forth. But that has very little to do with that, what's actually going on. In this case, because the entirety of this case, at least to begin with, is centred around the now missing Sacred Urn from Crane Village. And because obviously it's Myers and Pearl's item, we kind of need to go and uh, investigate this because it's kind of very important. And we've got this whole thing to do with this guy called Mask to Mask. The thing that's kind of hilarious about this is that um, I'm, I'm not actually quite sure how you went to pronounce Mask to Mask because it's like. You kind of need to have star in there, so it might be mask star to mask, but it, it's just easier to go mask to mask. Um, but basically, um, his Japanese name, which is Kaijin Star Kamen Masku, consists of Kaijin, which is Japanese for phantom, Kamen, which is Japanese for mask, and Masku, which is a Japanese pronunciation of the English word mask. So his full name would translate as Phantom Mask Mask. Which is hilarious. Um, and obviously Mask to Mask um, uses the French word mask. Um, literally making it mean Mask of Mask if translated into English. What's actually quite fascinating is that um, the word demasque, which obviously damask is quite close to, um, it's also French for unmasked, so um, it's quite a fitting name for what's probably going to be happening here, because we are going to probably have to, I believe, unmask mask to mask and uh, that's gonna be quite fun and ah oh, gumshoe absolutely useless but still a relatively decent bloke bit of an idiot gets us in trouble quite a lot but as long as we get what we need out of him it's totally fine and ah oh, <laughs> mr. detective dick I have to say, never a fan of the uh, shortening of the name Richard to Dick. It's never quite made any sense to me whatsoever. And to be fair, I've, I've never... It is just not right. So, I mean, obviously, Dick is usually used in a negative sense for a detective, but it is also a nickname for Richard. Thankfully, in my experience, I've not really had anybody use that as my nickname, because I've said, Haha, no, don't even go there. Um, now, if we assume that Richard is Dick Gumshoe's 
real name, it could possibly be a reference to Richard Diamond, private detective, who shares many traits with Gumshoe, but it is also possible that his name is a reference to Dick Tracy, who's a famous detective in American cinema. Well, the two are quite different in terms of personality. Um, Gumshoe is often used to denote very new and inexperienced private detectives. Um, in British to the Turnabout, Edgeworth says that Gumshoe is like gum on your shoe, and says that he annoyingly sticks around and is difficult to get rid of, although this is more a play on his name than an origin story for it. And his full French name, which is Dictective, is clearly a play on the word detective which obviously has the same typography and meaning in both French and English. And um, his Japanese name is Keisuke Itono Kogiri. Um, Itono Kogiri means a fretzel, and Keisuke um, is a reference to Keisuke Kuata, who's a Japanese rock musician. And obviously there are loads and loads of, tr of trivia with regards to Dick Gumshoe. But unfortunately, we don't really have enough time to go over any of these bits of trivia to do with Gumshoe because the part's nearly over. And we need to investigate what has gone on with this case. And uh, I think to do that, we need to head down into the basement.